If you're new to testing and you're trying to figure out what to test, then you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to be talking about testing coverage using the Jest testing framework. Once you get the hang of testing, it can be pretty easy to think that you have to test literally everything in your code. Aim for like 100% coverage. And I just want to tell you right now, don't worry about that. You're going to drive yourself insane aiming for that kind of coverage. And what's going to end up happening is that you'll spend more time writing and maintaining useless tests than doing what actually needs to be done for your app. Your app will change as you build it. Features will come and go. Features will evolve. And you want to allow your app some breathing room so that it can change when it needs to. Hopefully you know that having too few tests gives too little information for you to, and others to work with. On the flip side, having too many tests is like listening to someone drone on for hours about something that's kind of boring. Having too many tests creates that kind of cognitive overload for everyone involved, including you. Plus, even a small change such as renaming a variable can make your tests fail and then you'll have to update them yourself, which is just a bad use of your time. Remember, the goal of your tests is for other developers or even you six months into the future to be able to quickly glance at your code and understand the intent behind the work. As a general rule, you're gonna to wanna to aim for about 80% of test coverage. That's sort of the good enough range. For every 100 lines of code that you write, your test should cover about 80 of them. Now, testing coverage is a little more complicated than that, but if you're new to the concept, just start with that as your schema and I'll expand it as this video progresses. So with that, I'm going to demonstrate how to get testing coverage and what to test by using one of my projects as an example. So how do you figure out what the coverage is in your project at the moment? Well, thankfully, it's a lot simpler than you might think. So whenever you run the jest command, you also have to pass in the coverage flag, which looks like this, dash dash coverage. So when you run this command, your tests not only run, but you also get this really lovely, colorful table that breaks down everything about your current testing coverage. So as you can see right here, my testing coverage, the average should be at the top. Yep. So average is 84 for one category, 72 for another. So, you know, it's pretty good. It could be improved in some places, but overall it's not too bad. So as you can see, testing coverage is divided into four different categories. And I'll talk more about these categories, but right now I want to focus on two of them because these seem kind of similar, lines and statements. This is an example of, of code that's one line, but is also two statements at the same time. So basically what's happening here is I'm declaring a variable name and then I'm logging it to the console. This is basically two statements on one line. And then on the other hand, we have this one statement that's taking up six lines. It's basically just an object with a name and a say name method, okay? So I just wanted to get that out of the way. They're very similar. I just wanted to just show you real quick. So in addition to getting this table in your CLI, Jest also generates a coverage report for you. Now let's take a look at the coverage report. If you don't specify where you want your coverage report to go, it's just going to go in the directory where you run the command. So in my case, I have my coverage located in my test utils folder. So root directory, source, test utils, coverage, okay? So just generates these, these files here for you. The file of interest for you is going to be over here index.html. And so this is the coverage report, well, the HTML for the coverage report. So let's take a look at the actual coverage report. This is what your coverage report is going to look like, okay? So let's take a look at what we have here. So this is literally everything in my code base. So I discussed lines and statements. So there's two other categories I wanna point out, branches and functions. Let's talk about functions first, because that's pretty straightforward. It just basically refers to the number of functions that are run in your test suite. So for my help component, there are three functions and two of them are being covered in my test. So 
Let's go take a look at the help component, help.js. And so it's tell so Jest is telling me that this function is not being accounted for in my testing suite. This is your job as a developer. Do you want to create a test for something like this? All that's happening here is that when I click on the help icon, it's just going to set the pop up to, you know, whatever game we're on and the description of the game. So I have to decide for myself, is this something I want to test? No, then don't worry too much about it. Okay. So that's functions in a nutshell. Now let's talk about branches. Okay. So branches are basically different if statements or ternary operators if you're, you know, if you're into that. So let me show you an example of what a branch actually looks like. So in the source directory, there's two branches and one of them is being tested. So let's check out what that looks like. Okay, so it's telling me that I'm not testing for this condition in this file, okay? So basically what's happening here is I'm calculating the, the width of the window and if the screen is too small, it's gonna just, the whole app is just gonna flash a message saying, hey, your screen is too small. This works better on larger screens. It's meant for a projector. Please use a bigger screen. That, that's all this really is. So again, do I really wanna test for that? You don't wanna write so many tests that you get bogged down by them. If the, if the feature is important enough for you to have to test it, then sure, okay? So, so as you can see, like anything in the yellow is like 50 to about 80%. So it's like, you know, something to look at. And then of course, anything below 50 is red. And that's something you really gotta look at. So it's telling me that my finished component really needs to be looked at. And so interestingly, um, Jest actually includes functions in the report that I don't have a test written for. So for example, let me show you one function I wrote that doesn't have a test for it. Basically, all this function does is it takes a filter and it prepends these properties to it so that I can make the, um, the picture black and then I can make it whatever color I want afterwards. So it's pretty handy for a lot of little cases, but like the outcome of this function is quite predictable. Like all you're doing is just prepending these properties to whatever filter you pass in. I don't really think that's worth writing a test for because it's just, it behaves very predictably. So I'm not gonna test for that. Again, your job as a developer is to decide what is important for your test what, what it's important to test and what's not important to test. And really that depends on the app that you're building, okay? And so you're gonna wanna aim for about 80% coverage, okay? Now, if you're building a simple static website, you don't need that kind of coverage. Like, hell, I would say 50% for a static website is too much. If you found this video helpful, please hit the subscribe button and I will see you back here soon.